Well, good morning, kids. Another day in paradise. Here's some old cherry trees that we grafted. Oh, probably five, six years ago. Uh, actually, some of these trees were grafted. It's been longer than that. Uh, we've been working on this block, working it over little by little. But they've done real well. They're big trees and produce a lot of fruit now. I don't know what we did in here. Two two rows looks like. And skip one and then two. Uh, I think we skipped one to keep pollen in here. But the owner is very pleased. I hate working on these old dogs, these real old trees, but there's a technique we can use to make them work. It's tough, it's labor intensive, but but as you can see, it does work. And um, so it's difficult, but if it was easy, little girls would be doing it. I'm gonna go check on my crew and then I'm going to go over and start chainsawing on another block. That's kind of become my middle name this year, chainsaw, I guess. Buenos dias, homies. Buenos dias, man. Jorge. ¿Quieres la motosierra todo el día? Sí. Ok. <laughs> <laughs> bueno. Bueno. <laughs> A huevo. <laughs> hey, uh, Victor, you know you have to watch the crew because sometimes people don't listen to instructions. So <laughs> be. Yeah, be careful. I've heard that happen sometimes. <laughs> I don't want to say any names, but... <laughs> I'm confused, but it will happen again. Well, it's happened before, and it'll probably happen again. <laughs> Just not on this crew, right? <laughs> Man, what a beautiful place to work today. I know you can't see too much of the, the scenery because of the trees there, but um, it's a beautiful spot overlooking the valley. You can't quite see the river, but uh, nice clean orchard. Everything's cleaned up real nice. These trees are decent size. They're at the correct level. This is going to be just a real pleasure to do these trees. And we've grafted over here before too. We've, we've done a lot of grafting for this guy. Yeah, here's some that we we grafted before. About, let's see, one, two, three. Looks like they're coming into third or fourth leaf. Boy, they did well. Man, look at the fruit wood on there. Okay. I'm going to put on my little, somebody called it my Pillsbury Doughboy suit. <laughs> put on my little Michelin Man suit and uh, and get out here and knock these trees down. These will be fun to chainsaw too. They're just, uh, just a nice size of tree to graft onto. Yeah, that place down there yesterday, the uh, uh, Chinese medicinal herb farm, turns out it's quite a big, uh, big operation. It's uh, owned by Amway, and I forget what they called that line of vitamins or what a Neutralite or something like that. Anyway, they grow all kinds of herbs and and uh, uh, roots. Some of them are medicinal roots that they grow, and 
So we did some grafting, but I wanted to interview the guy and let him talk about the company and what it is that he does. He's in charge of uh, R&D, and it's quite interesting. I didn't uh, realize how large a farm it is, but it's a thousand acres. And so, quite an operation, but oh no, they couldn't have any video. No, no, it's all top secret, and they'd have to have to run that by corporate. And then I could come back, and he said, I'm sure you could come back and do an interview, but they couldn't talk specifically about the, the clones that we were working with at all, and, and I knew it might be, you know, a sensitive operation, and but I had to ask. <laughs> I thought it would have been an interesting video to learn a little bit about it, but uh, I, un I understand their position. Okay, I'm going to get with it. I'll see you guys at lunchtime or at first break. If Victor will let me have a break. Well, it's pretty good, but I think I'm going to touch them just a little bit. Just a slight touch. Just ever so. When you're filing these rakes down, always uh, do them before you sharpen the chain. That way when your file slips off a rake and hits a tooth, it won't make you near as mad because you won't have it sharpened yet. Isn't that clever? I buy this chain by the roll and we make up our own chain. And I bought that roll of chain, I don't know, years ago. So I'm sure it saved me a lot of money. Cause I bet it's a whole lot more expensive now than it was 10 years ago. You know, yesterday when I was talking about, uh, well, actually I was answering a comment that a guy left and had a couple questions. And uh, he uh, asked about, uh, talked about Montmorency pie cherry and inner stem. And uh, I did a job one time they had uh, they had Bing cherries on a mazard rootstock, and that's a that's a growing concern right there. The mazard is vigorous, and the Bing is vigorous, and boy, they will shoot up tall if you don't uh, dwarf them somehow. So uh, the, what they had me do was come in and cut the Bing down low lower. It was already grafted onto a mazard, and then we cut the Bing. And I grafted in an 18 inch piece of Montmorency pie cherry. And uh, that's a slow growing cherry. And then we got the Montmorency grafted in. And then we grafted the Bing back on top of it. So they had a dwarf uh, Bing tree. And they could pick them off a 10 foot ladder. Uh, and depending on how much of that inner stem you put in will constitute how much dwarfing you will get. And in the end, so if you'd put in just a four inch piece, you would still grow a fairly vigorous tree. But by putting in 18 inches, it really slowed it down, and uh, they made nice trees. 
so that's a little bit more about inner stem. Hey, you know what I'm going to do today? I am, uh, I'm out here in my office at, uh, at corporate headquarters today. I have made an executive incision. Um, Victor's got that other little job pretty well handled over there. He only had about 1,800 signs to put in over there. But what I'm thinking about this executive decision is, I think I might take off early today. When I get all the chainsaw work done, get all my graft wood cut up, I might just sneak out of here and go home and work on my rat rod a little bit. Man, that'd be fun because uh, we started gearing up a few days before we actually started in the field. So uh, I've gone a little over, well, almost a month with no days off and uh, some pretty long hours when we were doing a lot of out of town work, a lot of driving. So uh, it's time to play hooky a little bit maybe, you know. All right, I'm gonna get this done and see if I can get out of here. Hello. Scott, this is Ken Coates. Hey, Ben, how are you? Well, I just, I'm um, confused. I, I, I left a message I had, uh, I, apparently you called me the same day that Fernando did and I didn't get that message until this morning. So uh, that happens sometimes, I guess, but Anyway, we're we're hooked up now. <laughs> so perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah appreciate the callback. Sure. But yeah, I got a little project up there where uh, um, he was thinking that he was uh, I'd like to maybe have you do some uh, some top work on a few. I've got uh, we're actually growing a block up there that's just uh, uh, kind of designated for some processor stuff, and we uh -huh. wanted to get a little bit of pollen in there, so they're. Um, we're going to try to try to work some of those uh, trees over. It's going to be like third tree, third row kind of a thing. Well, um, you know, it was funny when he, he said they're scattered trees, and I said pollinizers. He goes, yeah, and I said third every third tree, every third row, and he goes, how would you know that? I said, well, I've, <laughs> I've, uh, I've done this a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you've known that, heard, that, heard of that pattern before. Oh, anyway, I've done huh? that many, many times, yes. So... Uh, our, uh, you know, I was talking to my foreman about this, uh, possibly doing this job, and and his concern. He, Victor's been with me 32 years, if that tells you anything. Uh, wow. We've nice. been we've been sharpening sticks together for a long time, but yeah, his his only concern would be the sign wood, and uh, so I assume you already have that and have it in cold storage. Is that correct? We do. Um, okay. Originally, you know, I talked. To, Fernando's done work for me for you yeah. know budding work for quite a while. Yeah. And he originally thought he was gonna. He had me cut a little bit bigger wood, and so yeah. that's what my only concern is. Is that uh, I agree is that the wood he had us cut originally was maybe a little bit bigger than what you would want to no, use. No, no, so. we want no. We want the big wood. We want uh, you would rather real have big size. wood. Okay. You bet. That's part of the key to doing top working cherries. Uh, is get that big wood. Some for budding, you might want the smaller stuff, but uh, yeah, no, we yeah. Uh, we use uh, you know at least half inch in diameter. Well, he was originally going to put one stick and kind of do a side graph kind of a thing, and yeah. then and so I I'm hoping we have enough. Okay. Because, um, uh, now going up top, I'm assuming we're going to have gonna have uh one or two you know sticks of each of those in in each brand or i mean in, you know in each leader or whatever is what? that typically what you do scott what is the age uh approximate age on these or? i think these are going into fourth leaf oh that's perfect that's the perfect for scenario for cherries as they get older they get tougher but you know anything about 10 years and younger we've had real good success with and in part due to the wood that we use so okay. you are they a, are they an open center tree basically a three liter maybe or what yeah okay. yeah most of them are three there might be a few that are four but I'll probably try to stick with the three kind of a three liter type yeah system. and sometimes if we need to stretch the wood sometimes we can even go on two liters if we can kind of get them up over the stump where they're they're opposite each other so they're you know they're okay. opposing and um, 
and and that'll build a tree because you got okay. plenty of shoots there. But you know, I really need to look at them with you, and then we sure. can see sure. how much wood we have and get it mapped out and really have a solid plan. Yeah, you bet. You bet. How how we doing time wise? When do you like to be We're okay. In and we and, uh, start we start grafting cherries in February, about the middle of February or so, down in uh, you know in the Banana Belt, down in Yakima, okay. in the Royal City, yeah. in Mattawa. And, yeah. And then we work our way north and keep getting to the higher elevations. And, and uh, okay. we've got, I try to have uh, most of my cherries done uh, in March, at least okay. by the end of March. I like to graft cherries real early. Those are the three common denominators that I've found over 40 years of grafting these things. Is graft them early in the window and use that real big wood and, uh, and, and, and go on younger trees. And that works real okay. well. So, what is okay. your schedule? Will you be around the uh, first part of the week, next week? Yep, yep, okay. I'm around. Okay. Well, we've got a couple couple of good weeks, and you're thinking, he thought uh, maybe around 1,500 trees, 12 to 1,500, does that sound about right? Or, or yep, what think? I think that's right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I uh, mentioned to him that, you know, it's a little more costly to do the pollinizers because we spend more time walking and not much yeah. time grafting. But uh, yeah, I'd like yeah. to look at them with you and uh, see if we can get it, get it figured out. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, if you're in the area, give me a shout and uh, well, just, uh, meet you up uh, meet you up there. And uh, this is in Ottawa. Um, no, we're between Othello and Royal City. Okay. Um, okay. Closer to Royal. Closer okay. to Royal City. Sure. Uh, kind of close to that Mordon area there. Okay. So. Sure. Well, I'll get a. I'll get in touch with you. I'll get a few things lined out for the first part of the week, get my crew going, and then I can break away, and I'll get okay. an address from you, and I'll shoot down there one morning. That'll be uh, um, the only reason I would need to be in that area is to come and see you. <laughs> so, okay. And I'll, okay. And I'll do that. <laughs> All right. Appreciate that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I, I hope I get to meet Fernando. He sounded like a really, really nice guy, and yeah, he is a good guy. He's he, really he, he, he done a good job, but you know, he, yeah. but that's kind of where his uh, he was like, oh, I'm comfortable budding, but man, he goes, I just wanted you to do, I just want you to have a good job done, and he yeah. goes, I just, I'd hate to go in there and not have it work out. He said, I've tried some top working on cherries before, and haven't had a lot of luck uh, necessarily. So he goes, there's so certain conditions make me a little nervous, but uh, yeah, and I, I uh, told him that that you guys would certainly respect that. You know, and uh, yeah. I've, I've done a yeah. lot of top. I do, I'm kind of, you know, I just do a lot of cherries. And uh, that's just kind of how it worked out because we got pretty good at it. And, yeah, yeah, and, you bet. And I'd like to do apples all the time, but uh, but cherries are tough. But, but we've got yeah. a few things figured out on them. And uh, I, nice. I nice. think we can make this happen for you. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Okay. I uh, look forward to catching up with you next week. Yeah, pleasure to speak with you. And, again, I apologize for taking so long to get back to you. But uh, we'll, nope, get, no problem. we'll uh, get it taken care of. Call back. All right. Thank you, Scott. Talk to Thanks, you soon. Ken. Yep. You bet. Yeah. Hello, this is Mel. Leave a message. <laughs> At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hello, Mel. This is your friendly neighborhood grafter calling. I wanted to see if you could... Uh, Maybe get your hands on your graft wood. I think you keep it at Van Wells, if I remember correctly. So, uh, if you wanted to get that wood, I think we can get to your place uh, Monday, maybe late morning, something like that. I've got a little thing to do in Cashmere first, but it's just 150 trees or so. It's a short job. Um, so, whatever is the most convenient for you, Mel, if you want to try and get it today, if you have time. And if not, you'd probably have time Monday morning. But sometimes it takes them a while to locate it, you know. So, if you want to call down there and have them at least uh, round it up, that might be good. And then uh, you can grab it either later today or Monday morning, whatever suits your schedule. And we'll get started. Go ahead and get it all, the cherry wood and the pear wood. And I think we can do the whole, the whole thing while we're there. Thank you, Mel. 
we will talk with you and see you soon. Okay. This chainsaw is done, so I can go do some rat rodding today. Maybe. It's already 11.30. I was hoping to be out of here by noon, but that's not going to happen. Maybe 2 o'clock. Okay, about this sign wood. I've had a lot of people ask me where we get the wood for grafting. And there's been a couple people ask if we take it back to the to the CA uh, for credit. Well, the CA doesn't own the wood. The way it works is these CA rooms and these packing facilities, storage and packing facilities, they just store their wood for the growers as courtesy. The grower collects the wood himself if he calls me up and wants to do grafting and I'll come out and show him where to cut the trees how we want them cut and tell him how much sign wood he needs to get and then it's up to him to source that wood usually he'll have a neighbor or know someone who knows someone who knows someone or a field man who can find some sign wood because the field men the guys that uh, do the chemical wrecks and recommendations they know a lot of growers and a lot of orchards so they can usually find the sign wood and here's where it comes from um, in this particular scenario uh, there's a few trees down there you see I've got them cut down that they didn't get grafted when we when we did this grafting I don't know why maybe we ran out of wood maybe there wasn't enough because this is uh, this row here is a different variety this is Rainier that's the yellow cherry that you see in the market sometimes. Uh, so he wanted to go ahead and get those trees grafted this year. So he left these trees unpruned. And that's the source for the sign wood. That's where it comes from. It's from uh, these, uh, these prunings. See, these, these trees here are pruned. All the sucker wood has been cut out. They're sometimes called water sprouts. But if you look up there, look up the top. That's all graft wood, and it all, all it is is, is just, uh, well, we just call them suckers. It's just, it's uh, not uh, fruit wood. You can see all the buds on this limb right here. That's fruit wood. All those are going to blossom, and there's going to be cherries hanging off that limb, and this limb, and this limb. See all these cherry buds? That's the fruit wood. Now this other wood is blank. You can see there's... Uh, there's no uh, no fruit buds on it. And here's a couple pieces right here. But this is excellent graft wood. So he left these trees unpruned so that I could collect enough wood to go and finish those trees down there and get them grafted. And there's tons of wood here. So it won't take me but just a few minutes. I only need, I think, 28 signs. So just a few... Uh, about eight, uh, nine, nine, ten sucker whips is all I need. Whips, suckers, shoots, water sprouts, whatever you want to call them. It's just blank wood with uh, with no uh, fruit spurs on it. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, and I'm gonna get busy and collect the wood, so my friend Victor can grab those trees down there. Sure has been a beautiful day. I'm about tuckered. Um, I've been on that chainsaw since 8 o'clock and it's about a quarter till 3. And I only stopped one time because I had to go over to Victor's crew where he was working and get some water. I didn't have any water out here. I forgot to bring water. So I had to go over and get a bottle of water. And that's the only stop that I've 
had all day. So I've been on that chainsaw <laughs> pretty much full time today and covered a lot of ground, cut down a lot of trees. And you know what? It feels really good to be able to do that. That old saying, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Boy, it was just, it was just killing me last year after that heart surgery to not be able to come out here and, and do this. Uh, you know, after doing it for 37 years, it kind of, kind of grows on you, I guess. Uh, so I just feel really blessed that I, uh, that I'm able to come out here, do this, got my strength back and my energy and, and, uh, just glad to be here. <laughs> All right. Well, it never did get above 36 degrees today. It's been that all day long. It was comfortable chainsawing, though. It's nice weather for chainsawing. But, uh, <sighs> so much for my great plans of getting off at noon and going and working on the rat rod, huh? Uh, let's see if you guys saw that. I don't know if you saw that. I don't think I had the camera on it. See this deer fence? This is, uh, they put fences around these orchards because the deer will come in and rub the young trees and eat the young trees and they can be pretty hard on an orchard so they put these fences. But you can see there, if a deer wanted to get in, they just, uh, you know, they run alongside that fence and then just hop over it. <laughs> it deters them though. I mean, there are less of them gonna get in. But in case one does get in, well, then they get trapped inside the fence and they can do a lot of damage because they, they got to eat. And here's something kind of interesting. Here's a little gate here. And you can see they can get out, but they can't get in. So if they do jump the fence and get trapped in here, they'll run alongside that fence looking for a hole. And when they get here, they'll find it. And they can just push through it and go on out, but they can't come in from the outside. Pretty clever, huh? All right, I'm gonna get out of here. I gotta go see Victor. I need to uh, talk to him about tomorrow. And uh, I'll see you guys down the road. Thanks for coming along.